Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at um, the CP1H numbering systems and addressing in the PLC. And the first thing we want to do is look at actually the programming manual. Now the programming manual itself will tell you about the instructions. It will also tell you about how things are organized. Right? Um, so if we look at the, the programming manual, it will tell us about the addressing of the I.O. And basically what we have is we have a word uh, followed by a period and then the bit number. So if we want to do a bit address within the controller or one or zero, what we do is we put the word address followed by a period, then the bit number. Now the leading zeros are admitted, you don't need those. And then if we want to address a word, then what we have is just the word here. Now there are several memory areas and the memory areas we can find in our operation manual and our operation manual will give us things like batteries and and basic structure of the controller so moving on to 4.1 the overview of the IO memory it comes up with a, a table and these memory areas are where we actually utilize the uh, instruction and the instruction will um, grab information and put information back and forth into this memory area. And here are the memory areas of our CP1H. We have the CIO or Core IO area. Um, and it contains several different uh, system bits and special areas where we put things like device net, etc. And that's all listed here. And we can access them by or assess them or access them by bit or word. And you can see that we can read and write. And so this is the, the parameters that we can look at in order to see if what we can do with, within our control program. So if we look at the IO area, our input and output area, and these are the uh, inputs. So the input area is uh, word zero to word 16. Each one of those has 16 bits. And our output area starts at 100 to 116. So these are the physical I.O. of our controller. So if we look down we have also a work area, we have a holding area, an auxiliary area, we have uh, temporary relays, we have data memory areas where we store a lot of uh, information. These are all memory retentive. Um, we have timers and counters, um, index registers, data registers, etc. So all those are listed in those charts. And also uh, further on we have a, a series of, it breaks it down into each different area and actually tells you all about them. We also have links of all this stuff that are, will be on the website at accautomation.ca. So let's look over at our controller and what we'll do is we will call up our, our program and I have a program up here that we're currently right now communicating to our controller. You can tell that. Here are the lights here. We can see that we are in monitor mode just like we did last time. And what we'll do is we will call up our watch window. And remember our output here. We had our watch window from last time. And what we can do is we could probably uh, force this bit on and what you'll see is the bit comes on on our output and it's forced and what we can do is we can unforce that bit and it then um, or sorry turn that off there we go and now that bit is now off so what you'll see that are again coming our, to our um, table that we just looked at, output 100 is the first output channel of our physical output words. So let's look at a couple examples. In the controller we have um, a few different things here. We have a, a couple of indirect moves and data manipulation that we're going to be looking at. And what I've done is I've used uh, internal bit 21.00. If we look that up in the table, you'll see that's actually used for internal work area. 
and that just allows me to turn on bits to see things happening and the first thing I'm going to do is there's a move instruction and what the move instruction will actually do is take 16 bits and move them to a, another 16 bit location so in this case here I'm moving the, the number which could be, be um, a binary 100 or it could be a VCD or anything it's just a number 100 and move it into data memory 200 and if I turn on this bit that's what happens so the, there's also in here we can monitor the actual memory areas by calling up this memory and what it is it gives you a blank screen and what we'll do is look at DM and here it comes up and what you'll see is we'll scroll down scroll down here actually we'll go back up and we'll go to um, data memory 200 currently right now it's at zero we'll do online we'll do monitor um, so what we'll do is monitor that 200 location so right now you can see that I'm monitoring that location right now so if I go back to my program here and what we'll do is just move everything over to the left here we'll close the uh, project window off and now what we'll do is uh, set this bit on and when we do you can see here that the number 100 moves into D200 if we check our monitor um, you'll see that again we have the value of 100 so that exactly worked as expected the next one we have here is what we're going to do is we're going to do it uh, move but indirectly so that means that we're going to set up this pointer and the pointer tells me where I'm going to go and in this case here when I turn on the bit it will move the number one into uh, data memory to 200 again which acts as a pointer and this little at sign in front means that it tells me where to go and what it's telling me is we're going to be moving um, a binary number and 100 if we put it in um, actually turns out to be 256 decimal and we can always use the uh, system calculator if we want to look at that and turn your calculator on to um, uh, programming and you can compare all these values so you can put 100 in for hex and then it will actually show you that's equal to 256 so when we turn that on it's going to go to uh, put number one indirectly um, using data memory 200 which points to data memory 256 and will actually put that number one into that location so what we'll do is again we'll take a look at our monitor and we'll go to 256 256 is right here and right now it's at zero so let's turn this bit on set it on and when we do we should look back at our data memory and sure enough we have now a one in that location so it's actually acting as a pointer to go to that location the next example we're going to turn on bit 2 of channel 21 we're going to move the number 2 again indirectly um, via uh, data memory 200 but in this time here we use the asterisk in front of the data memory and the asterisk actually means that's a, a BCD value so 100 actually represents 100 so it will actually move that that memory area into data memory 100 so again we'll take a look at um, data memory 100 and currently right now it's at zero let's set this on and now when we look at data memory 100 we should actually see that it actually has the value 2 that we expected which it does that's great now, data memories can be used as a word at a time, as we can just see now. Um, 
but there's also things called index registers in our CP1H and this is kind of a new concept for some of the newer controllers and what it will do is we can now use indirect addressing on bits as well as words within the core I.O. area of the PLC. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move uh, 22.02 which is just a, a random address into index register 0 and we're going to move 23 channel or uh, channel 23 into IR index register 1 when we turn this bit on. Now in this case here what we'll be doing is we will actually be looking at the What we'll do is we actually look at the individual bits or the core I.O. area. So what we'll do is we'll call up our memory again. We'll call up our core I.O. And what we'll do is we'll do online, we'll monitor. And now we're monitoring the status of our bits located here. So let's go back to our program. We will set this. And when we do, now we've moved 22.02 and 23, um, channel 23 into IRs 1. So our first indirect move will come from the next one here. So if I, if indirect address, IR indirect uh, register 0, which contains 22.2 is activated, then the number three is going to be moved into uh, indirectly IR1. Okay. So what we're going to look at IR1 contains the value of 23. So if we go back to our monitoring and our value of 23 is currently zero. And what we want to do is we want to then um, if we turn this on. So if bit 22.02 is on, you will notice that we will then turn on and put 3 into that register. So let's turn on our watch window and what we'll do is call up our bit uh, 22.02 And what we'll do is right currently right now it's at zero so we're going to set that on so now it's on and since it's on this will automatically uh, move once I turn this uh, bit on as well so let's set this bit on and now when we look at um, IR channel 23 we should see the value 3 in that register so we look at that and sure enough in address 23 we have 3. So, so far everything's working great. Now what we can do is we can offset this. So indirect address we can also offset that so that if we look at this symbol here we're actually saying it's bit 22.02 with an offset of 3 which is actually equal to bit 22.05. Right. So if we look at 22 bit 05, then what we will do is we will move 4 into address um, pointed to by I indirect at, or indexed register 1 with an offset of 12. So in our case here, um, index register 1 contains the value of 23. So our offset of 12, we add those together, we'll get a, a core I.O. channel of 35. So, looking at this, again, we'll call up our watch window. Our watch window, we will change this now to 2205. And what we will do is we will set this value on. So now that value is on. And when we energize this value, first of all, we should look at Core IO uh, channel 35 and 35 currently right now 
contains the value of zero. So when we energize that, or set that on, okay, now we look back at our 35, and again we have, as expected, the number four into that register. So you can see we can do a lot of manipulation with data directly by calling the bit direct or indirectly. And what we'll do is just close that down and look back at our station. Now the last thing we can do with indirect addressing is we can actually use the uh, data registers as a pointer to give you my offset for my indirect addressing. So again, it will do basically the same thing as we turn things on and off. Okay. So very powerful instruction, very powerful way of manipulating these bits and words around in the CP1H controller. All right, if you found this helpful, there are three ways you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up on this YouTube video so other people can find this information just like you have. You can um, also subscribe to their YouTube channel. You could also go to our, our website at accautomation.ca and subscribe there. And when you do so, what you will receive are two free uh, links to some eBooks, one on robust uh, data logging and the other on numbering systems. And what that will also do is every time we publish new content, you'll be the first to know with a quick email. All right, and the last thing you can do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.